Minerals and vitamins are not a one-size-fits-all approach. You can't look at a bottle and just trust that what it says is exactly what you need to take. What about the fact that our bodies are dynamic and we're always doing things? We're always under different levels of stress. We're always doing different kinds of exercise. We're always putting our bodies through different things. So we can't just have a unified standard that we should be consuming of certain vitamins and minerals. In this video, I'm going to explain how the balance of minerals really truly is the root of just about everything that's happening in our bodies, whether we're healthy or whether we're not, whether we're having inflammation or whether we're not, truly is the root cause. And that's to coin Morley Robbins, who is an amazing, amazing wealth of knowledge when it comes to the world of minerals. And I'm going to talk about some of his information in this video because I think it's absolutely relevant. So first and foremost, I want to talk about minerals. Okay. There's 18 essential minerals that we need but we're really only gonna focus on four because it's the polarization and the balance of these four that dictate everything in our lives. And I mean that with sincerity. Okay, we've got magnesium, we've got calcium, we've got copper, and we have iron. These minerals are critical. I'm gonna start with the balance of magnesium and calcium. Okay, magnesium is sort of like the relaxing mineral, whereas calcium is the excitable mineral. What happens is when we look at blood flow, for instance, magnesium increases blood flow, whereas calcium decreases it and causes calcification. Then we have magnesium increasing soft tissue repair and helping all the muscles, things like that. Then we have calcium working on the opposite, working towards firm, working towards bones, working towards anything that's hard like the teeth. You see, we have too much calcium in our bodies, plain and simple. We're getting a ton from the diet. We're getting a ton from the old got milk campaigns that are showing us we need to be consuming calcium all the time. We're not getting enough. Well, the fact is we have enough. And a lot of people ask, well, can you have a balance of too much magnesium and not enough calcium? The answer is yes, but it very rarely happens because that is how much calcium we are actually getting day to day. So now that I've covered sort of that magnesium calcium balance just on the surface, Let's talk about how much magnesium you generally need. Okay, so generally speaking, it's recommended that you have about five milligrams of magnesium per pound of body weight. Now again, stick with me through the end of this video because I'm gonna explain some things in some more detail. But I wanna talk about something that's called the magnesium burn rate. Now this isn't an official research term. This is a term that was coined by Morley Robbins himself, but I think it's awesome and it makes so much sense. It means that you have your baseline of magnesium that you should be consuming. But then what about when you're under stress? Because when you're under stress, you're depleting your magnesium stores. When you're exercising a lot, you're depleting your magnesium stores. So we all have a different rate at which we burn magnesium. Now, although it's not really quantifiable right now, we are burning it at different rates. And the thing is, is as you age, the rate at which you burn magnesium seems to increase. Once you start looking at that mag burn rate, you can realize how much of this circles back to inflammation. Okay, so remember I talked about the calcium magnesium balance. Okay, when you have too much calcium, you're constantly in a little bit of a state of inflammation. Calcium is exciting the cell. It's making everything tense. Remember, we're electricity here. We've got a lot of that happening. So we have a level of inflammation that's occurring there. We need that magnesium to balance that out. But one of the things that Morley Robbins looked at was when you look at hair samples of people that are deficient in magnesium, they don't always restore their magnesium levels through even keeled supplementation. What that tells us is that they're constantly burning through their magnesium and never really able to restore those levels because they're burning it up as fast as they're taking it in. That means they're stuck at these levels of inflammation. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk a little bit more about the actual root cause protocol and balancing out all four of these minerals. See, the purpose of the root cause protocol is to increase mitochondrial functioning through the balance of those four minerals. So we're talking about copper, we're talking about magnesium, we're talking about iron, and of course, we're talking about calcium. But why am I focused so much on iron in this case? You see, iron is critical. We need it for a lot of things in the body. However, just like calcium, we tend to get too much. We get too much from our diet. We get too much from iron fortified foods like the wheats and the grains and things like that. But additionally, iron accumulates in the body. So that by the time we are getting to 30 or 40 years old, we have so much iron in the body that we're starting to have too much iron in comparison, again, to magnesium. And what iron does is iron essentially causes a different kind of oxidation. It starts competing with magnesium for free oxygen in the blood. Think of it like this. You take a breath, you've got a lot of oxygen flowing through your bloodstream. Okay, then you have too much iron in the body. That iron is gobbling up the oxygen and it's fueling itself. 
Okay, that means the magnesium isn't able to oxidize. It's not able to get that, which means that you have too much and you're way out of balance. So this can cause an issue in the cell, meaning it's gonna disrupt an enzymatic pathway that would allow the cell to normally create adenosine triphosphate, which is ATP. I know I'm throwing a lot at you, so basically what this means, too much iron means not enough oxygen, which inhibits an enzyme, which slows down energy production. This might be literally a root to why we slow down as we age. Why when we reach 35, 40 years old, all of a sudden we're more fatigued and we don't feel like we're able to regenerate our ATP as much. Now to add insult to injury, magnesium is required for ATP function. So if we have too much iron, which is killing off our magnesium and too much calcium, which is killing off our magnesium, well then we have a double whammy where we're not able to get the right amount of adenosine triphosphate to actually fire meaning we're not getting that cellular firing, we're not getting that energy. So you see where I'm getting at with this? So now we get a little bit more complicated, but a little bit more fine-tuned. This is where copper comes in. You see what copper does is copper helps channel the iron into the right place. So you don't have just the plain old iron that's floating around gobbling up oxygen. Copper is going to allow that iron to go and do its job right. It's going to allow that iron to convert from the state of a ferrous state over to what's called a ferric state, which means it's a lot more functional, a lot more usable. The copper rides around through the bloodstream on something that's called the sorelloplasm. That sorelloplasm basically drives the copper around, making sure that the iron is oxidizing the right way, not stealing the magnesium's oxygen, not stealing the other minerals' oxygen, making sure that the iron is going to where it needs to go to make sure that you don't go anemic, to make sure that you don't have the symptoms of iron deficiency. So I hope that that's making sense there. Okay, but then we have to start looking at another mineral, and that's zinc, okay? So a lot of guys take zinc. A lot of men take zinc because it can help testosterone levels and things like that. And we're told a lot of times that we need more zinc. And that is sometimes true. But here's where we have to be very careful with the balance. You see, if we have too little zinc, it's usually because we have an overabundance of iron. But we actually need copper to make sure that, that iron goes to the right place. But if we consume zinc, Zinc inhibits copper. So you can start doing the math, okay? If we can just reduce the iron and increase the magnesium, then the zinc will start to free up. You won't have that imbalance of the iron and the zinc, and everything will start to fall back in place and copper can do its job. So we have to focus on copper, more or less, before we really focus on the zinc. When it comes down to iron, you're gonna find a lot of people that think that they're deficient in iron, especially women, because women are always told that they're deficient in iron, especially if they're on their menstrual cycle because they're losing blood. That may be the case, but there is such a difference between being chronically deficient in iron, especially because it accumulates in the body, and truly just having a functional deficiency. That functional deficiency more or less would mean that you're more apt to need copper to utilize the iron right than anything else. But additionally, it's important to make sure that you're getting enough magnesium. And like I said before, magnesium is the only mineral that you can really use safely in a supplement form that's not going to give you too much of it. Magnesium is sort of the underdog here. It's like the most important, but it's getting overwhelmed because we're consuming so much of the excitable wrong minerals. And I want to take this back and end on this because inflammation is one of the most important things that we have to pay attention to. As someone that has family members, a wife that's suffering from autoimmune disease, inflammatory conditions, it is so near and dear to me. And I know it's extremely near and dear to Morley as well. Basically what happens is there is such a solid link between deficiencies in magnesium and inflammation, it's not even funny. Way back even in 1992, there was a study done on rats that found that rats that were deficient in magnesium across the board had astronomically higher levels of inflammatory markers and inflammatory cytokines. And we know now, in this day and age, that inflammation is the root of so much disease. But what is the root of the root? It's seeming to be minerals. And it really makes a lot of sense to base everything off magnesium. So if we follow Dr. Selig's approach, where we say five milligrams per pound of body weight, but increase from a baseline of five milligrams per pound based on how much stress you are under or how much you're working out, that's how we can start. That is the root cause and that's what Morley is all about. It's less about a product and more about making sure people know the importance of magnesium and its root to anxiety and its root to disease. So as always, keep it locked in here on my videos. And if you're looking to start getting to the root, start looking at getting the magnesium and getting yourself in check.
I'll see you in the next video and stay educated on your body.